That's how you play. Hello, what is up, guys? Two classes being taught by me, Vito. Uh, this is gonna be the very first class with my friend Ashley. We're basically gonna do a stylized portrait shoot on film. So let me walk you into the space. Ashley in the back, she's eating right now. <laughs> Zoom in on that. <laughs> <laughs> they saying this is an orange back, backdrop, but I feel like it's, it's red. It's basically a painted, they painted this backdrop. It's, it's some insane amount of money. I forgot how much Todd said this costs to actually have. I think like two, three hundred, something like that. But Ashley's gonna have all black fit with this one. And then, this white backdrop right here. We're gonna have, it's basically gonna be a tennis, tennis look. Right, she has a tennis outfit. So, and I bought my turf. Fake grass, I'm gonna lay it out on the ground. She's gonna have a tennis fit on. And then, we have a racket, tennis racket. Some tennis balls. your color 600 film got your portrait 800 for 35 and you have your four rolls of 120 portrait 800 and all these are going in the Mamiya RB67 Pro S and this is going in the Canon AE1 and I brought my Polaroid to take some physicals Vito teaching two classes is crazy, right? But yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying the video thus far. But yeah, October 1st is the day that I will never forget because I was teaching two classes for the very first time on film photography. That question was asked if I would be able to teach a class on film photography. And I'm just thinking, right? Do I want to progress dealing with my career or do I want to stay stagnant? No, stagnant. Yes, progress. I'm trying to progress. A little bit about me, I do not like public speaking at all. Because public speaking deals with anxiety, overthinking, losing train of thought, just so many embarrassing things that could possibly happen when you are talking in front of people, especially a large number of people. So when this opportunity dealing with me potentially teaching a class was brought to me, I was just like, you know what, let me say yes. Let me experience the life of a teacher, right? Teaching people. And yeah, I said yes, and I'm happy I said yes. All right, yeah, definitely thank you guys for coming through, you feel me? It's gonna be a little talk, but after that, we're gonna get straight to the shooting 
of the photo with our model, Ashley. A stylized film portrait shoot with Vito. That's me. But yeah. So as you guys can see, I only put, I shoot with a lot of cameras. Like that's like one thing about me. I never like to like be on the type of time of like shooting on one camera or even with style wise. Like I don't just like shooting just portraits. I like to do a variety of different photos. But if I did have to choose, I would choose portraiture work because that's like what my work deals with a lot of. But yeah, the two cameras that I use in terms of shooting portraits is my Canon AE-1 program and it has a 50 mil uh, and a 1.8 aperture and it's this bad boy right here. And yeah, the reason why I like to use this camera in particular is of how small it is and how fast I can capture the photos. I'm so used to just shooting with this camera where it's like, it kind of takes time, you feel me? But this camera, you can literally look and plus it has a light meter at that, um, a built-in light meter, but you can just point, shoot, crank it, point, shoot, crank it. It's just a faster process to be able to take photos, you feel me, other than this one. Not to say this is a bad camera though, it's just, in, in the difference between the two, one, you have to really, really take your time and it's a very slow type of process. The other one, it can be a slow process. You feel me? It can be a slow process, but um, majority of the time you are shooting way faster though. The Mamiya RB67 Pro S with a 90 mil and a 3.8 aperture. Especially when you're shooting film, you want to find a good lens with a good aperture, a small aperture. Unfortunately, with this lens and just this model of camera, you can only it only goes up to a 3.8. But when it comes to just a lot of personal work and just consistent work, like these two cameras are like my main cameras that I use on set in terms of um, personal projects. And oh, I also forgot to mention, I do have a dream filter that I always, always, always keep on this lens, like this whole setup is literally all I use in terms of this camera too. And every now and then, if I'm doing street photography, I do like to put on my zoom lens for this one. But in terms of portraiture, these are literally how I set up my camera and how I have it at like all times. But yeah, the dream effects filter, if you're shooting film, I, once again, I highly advise you get like the dream filter, some type of pro mist. Because I mean, when you're shooting film at the same time, when you have a dream filter, it's just beautiful. You feel me? Like it's, I, I, I always have it on there. Um, to this day, and I've been shooting film for like three years now. This is considered an amateur photography camera, but I, I'm using it. So it's like, you feel me? But it's like, whatever works for you, works for you, right? I feel like there's no such thing as amateurish gear, right? Whatever works for you works for you as an artist, so. Um, and then, as I said before, it does have a built-in light meter, so, you know, I use a light meter app on my phone, or some people use the light meter that's right next to Victor right here. Yeah, take that bad boy out. Yeah, those can cost up to two, three hundred dollars, so, but I usually just stick either on the app on my phone, or if the camera does have a light meter, such as this one, you just half press, and it tells you exactly the aperture you need, so you just adjust the aperture. Um, so yeah, these are some of the images you can get dealing with the Canon AE-1, right? All these photos were shot on my Canon AE-1 program, so once again, it doesn't matter the tools that you are using. What's working for you will work for you. All right, the big boy, you feel me? The Mamiya RB67 Pro S released back in 1971. Um, it's a 6x7 medium film format camera that shoots 120 and dealing with this camera, it has 10 shots a roll. I, I'll like kind of demonstrate, cause it's just, it's just funny, it's just funny to like, cause when I first bought this camera too, I was like, wait, how am I gonna like, can I like, what are, but that's why it's called the RB2, it's, it's, it has a rotating back to it, so. Yeah, so this is landscape. If you're trying to shoot basically portrait mode, you turn it and then you shoot it like so. But that's why it's called the RB because it's called the rotating back. Um, it has that function to it. 
The RB67 Pro S, these are some of the portraits that I had taken. My friend Roger with the red boots, Astro boots. That's pretty much it in terms of that. Um, we're gonna go into uh, shooting the tennis look on my man's Ashley, and then after that, we're gonna switch into like an all black and we're gonna shoot on here. So, but yeah, all right, yeah, let's, let's get started. In many ways, this experience definitely was a test for me to see if I see myself doing something like this in the near future. And after that day, I definitely do see myself doing something like this in the near future. I'm not the greatest yet, but with time and with much more practice, I think I'll get there for sure. Uh, it's called the uh, My Light Meter Pro. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very, very easy to use. Like, if you guys want to take a closer look, like, literally, it's just you tap her face, you press measure, and it tells you. So ISO, box speed, I'm using Portra 800, and then the speed, shutter speed, 250, and then the aperture is 5.6. Hopefully, Ashley gets the sponsorship. <laughs> you need that, you feel me? Actually, oh, yeah. Me. One, two, three. Left. She's gonna, she's gonna try with this camera. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you're trying to shoot a portrait. So you, you're looking here, and then this is to focus. This is your focus knob. More magnified look. Tilt it. So just. That crack is something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, let's go with the medium format. Let's do this. Don't, don't, don't press it yet. <laughs> Hold on, let me, like, let me make sure. She got me stressing. She got me stressing. I'm like, yo, don't, don't, don't do it. Hold up. All right. I'll measure the light for you. So 800, portrait 800. Shutter speed is 125. Um, which is good, which is fine. And then 3.5 is the aperture. 3.8 is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then make sure your subject is... Which app is that? Light Meter? My Light Meter, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, whenever you're ready, you just, just snap. Yeah. And then you gotta... Right, and then the second time, which is the last time, bring this down. There you go, all right. You can try it again. Actually have her look, in, look, look into the camera. Ash, one? yeah, 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 all right, cool. Count to three. All right, crank it. And then crank it again. Yes. Look at you. Killer. Yeah. You gotta buy one now. You gotta buy one. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know if you guys do it, but like I usually count to three. So on three, I snap. So it's making sure I know when to actually take the photo, but also making sure the subject knows as well, like, oh, on three, he's gonna snap the photo. Stuff like that you gotta be really crucial about, because once again, you, it's not like you can take it back. All right, so whatever photo you take, that's, that's, that's the photo you take, you feel me, so. One, two, three. Rinse. 125 shutter speed, 5.6 aperture. All right. You can count to three. One, two, three. Two. Three. 
But yeah, dealing with this last class, I did display five film photography cameras and it was a longer PowerPoint just explaining how exactly I use my Epson V600 dealing with all five of these cameras. All five of these cameras have different dimensions dealing with the film negatives, which is pretty awesome because the V600, you are able to scan multiple dimensioned film negatives, including Polaroids, right? Color 600 film is what I use dealing with my Polaroids specifically speaking, and you are able to scan Polaroids dealing with that scanner. But yeah, once again, I do appreciate everyone who attended these classes and I was so happy that Unique actually had me do these classes. It was just, once again, an experience for me to test and see if I was able to do this and I did it, which I'm just so proud of myself for. Yes to progress, no if you're trying to stay stagnant. Um, dealing with my career path, especially as an artist, I want to try to progress I want to learn new things. I want to do things that are outside of my comfort zone. I'm back with new videos. Peace.